Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm Connor Whiteley, bringing you with psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at connorwhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 183 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Con Whiteley. And today's episode, we're talking about how to know if a holiday romance is serious or not. And it is Thursday the 15th of December 2022 as I record this. So today's episode, because this episode is coming out in that Christmas week, I just really wanted to do a really fun podcast episode. Because, let's face it, seasonal romances? I've never had one for a example, but I know some people do, and even if you've never had one, I still think this is quite a fun topic to actually look at, because we've all, because I think that we've all seen like holiday films, movies, etc., which have actually like featured these but how do these work in real life? And amazingly enough, there's actually psychology research on it. So and hopefully, as you can tell from my voice, I'm actually really excited about today's episode. And I know that you're going to love it too. It is just great fun. So uh, moving on to the psychology news section, we're reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest. And there were two here today. So the first one is, Transgender children face discrimination even at primary school level. For many young transgender people, socially transitioning, transitioning sorry, can be a highly difficult egg experience. Research has shown that the discrimination and harassment can be common during adolescence transition, and trans teenagers frequently experience bullying not only from peers but from adults too. A recent study in the British Journal of Educational Psychology looks at a group of uh, of, uh, of children who were socially transitioned at an even earlier age, during primary and early secondary school. Through interviews with parents and children, the work finds a year culture of sin normativity, a form of a normative thought which assumes that everyone is sin gender and has the same needs, within school and the failure to protect trans children potentially leading to serious consequences to the children's education and mental health. So, for this topic, I don't necessarily know how much I can comment on it, because do the transgender argument and these and those sort of things, I'm not informed on whatsoever. Uh, To be honest, I think that... Um, the extent of my knowledge extends from um, gender theory that I cover in developmental psychology and I support these people and I know that gender identity isn't fixed yeah, like a fixed well, because it's a social identity whereas biological sex isn't so this is an interesting argument but the core basics uh, do actually apply uh, regardless of, yeah, well, like, uh, regardless of that if the child is a uh, transgender or not, uh, or not, but, like, we really need to protect children uh, from abilities if they um, they don't kind of formatize social norms because just because they're different doesn't mean that they should be bullied, like, whether they're black, white, straight, gay, or um, autistic or not, or they have another mental health condition, nobody should be bullied just because they're different. 
And the second one is, we'd rather do something requiring mental effort than nothing at all. The enforced downtime of the A Christmas Holidays can sometimes pose a conundrum. On the whole, look, we don't much like to exert ourselves, so it's nice not to have a, a lot to do. Effort is well effortful. And unless it requires adequate rewards like money or fun, we tend to avoid it. But uh, as the authors of a new work in the Journal of Experimental Psychology point out, we don't like to be bored either. In fact, the team finds that although March has to be made of assertiveness of effort, being bored is at least as unpleasant, if not more so. So this I think is actually quite a fascinating one because at the moment, note to self, do not, do not give yourself a challenge to do before New Year's Eve when you already have it so much to do <laughs> when it comes to podcasting, business and so many other things that I do. So yeah, so to be honest, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment, but I'm having a blast. I like a blast over, and even though the Christmas time is, you know, but like, it's like supposed to be like downtime, that's what I'm uh, like pushing myself for. But actually, like going back to Bob, what the article's actually talking about, the this is actually quite a um, good one because I can know well what because the common sense would have us believe that we would rather be doing like, nothing at all and we would just rather want to be avoiding effort at all costs. But it turns out that um, that none of us actually like being bored, which I completely agree. No, I just hate like being bored. So um, I guess that a, a possible takeaway from like today's um article is that uh, if you ever do find yourself like a being bored, maybe yeah, like try and have something uh, that doesn't require much effort like to handle. Just you can entertain yourself. Uh, just so you're not bored, but equally you're having downtime and that you're not putting that much effort in like uh yeah but like in like to it. So yes, yeah, so that's just an idea. So that's enough of the psychology news section. So let's move on to the person update. So we're moving on to the person update. This week has been very busy because I've been doing like tons of um, other tasks and also in uh, the UK it is freezing at the moment because we've had snow for the first time in like four years. The entire world seems to like grind to a halt, at least on like Monday it did. And um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not like, very like, funny though, is that when I had to go to university on Tuesday, so my car was uh, covered in uh, snow because I hadn't been bothered enough to like, clear it, I lost my windscreen scraper, so I sort of had to juggle between using my, uh, um, yeah, like, my like, dear Mr. thing, and um, a trout because my dad thankfully gave me like some salt in it in that case I got stuck but so that was like quite fun and yes yeah, so, like this week has has it just been really good to fun like all first it's just so I can prepare for like Christmas I'm recording the like next three uh, podcast episodes in advance and uh, we are covering some absolute brilliant topics and and even though I'm always excited for the podcast, these next few weeks I'm super, super excited for. Because this week we've got the like, romance one, which you're like, looking at. Next week we've, uh, well, we 
we've got terror management theory and how that connects to a Christmas. Again, slightly bleak, but it does have such good uplifting message at like at the end. And then we kick off 2023 with such a brilliant episode on why the children set fires. So that's just great fun and that is just, that really does bust quite a few myths. So you've got tons of great content coming up the podcast. Or whilst I catch up with other products and I actually have some downtime during that, you know, during that like Christmas season. And I hope that you wonderful listeners also have plenty of downtime. And that you will have like great fun with your friends and family. So as always, I always like love to your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, connorwiley, connorwiley.net. You can always leave a comment at the show notes at connorwiley.net forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci-fi wiley. I always love to from all of you because it really helps make the podcast feel more like a conversation. And you can also leave a comment on the Facebook post at Connor Whiteley, psychology author. And today's episode has been sponsored by Psychology of Relationships, the social psychology of friendships, romantic relationships and more third edition. So, but the reason why this book is just such a perfect sponsor for today's episode is that because, even though this uh, podcast episode uh, focuses on my um, romances and the uh, short-term relationships, uh, this uh, book actually helps you to build upon it because it uh, focuses on long-term relationships. For example. What is the biological, cognitive and other social causes of like the relationships? And then uh, most importantly, I could also uh, cover uh, other great topics. For example, like theories of like sexuality, homosexuality, um, communication and a personal favourite, how do relationships change and end? Uh, from the emails that I've got from readers, that's always quite a popular one. <laughs> and they also goes on to uh, stuff like pro-social behaviour. So, if you enjoyed today's episode, and uh, you want to take your understanding of uh, relationships to uh, the next level, then definitely uh, check out this uh, great book. So, that is uh, Psychology of uh, Relationships. The social psychology of friendships, romantic relationships, and more. Fourth edition. Available from all major ebook retailers, and you can get the paperback and hardback version from Amazon, your local bookstore, or local library if you request it. And as of this is like Christmas week, though, if anyone is um, struggling to buy you, like, Presents, all of my psychology books do make great gifts. But if you didn't want to buy a book, if you still wanted to give the podcast a bit like one time or more, then you can now buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Connor Whiteley. So that's enough for the personal update. Let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So, moving on to the content part of our today's episode. So, we're going to be talking about how to know if a seasonal romance is serious or not. And this is just such a fun podcast episode. Let's dive into it. What winter coating? Before researching this uh, topic, I had never heard of the term winter coating before. And this is where former couples rekindle their relationship over the holiday season and discard it like a winter coat when the spring, if that, arrives because this is the time when new dating opportunities arise. 
this winter coating is a is a probably a, a short term dating strategy. Use that throughout the year for couples, but it is just more on a show but during the holiday season. As well as what I personally find quite surprising about this is that there's actually research on the topic showing that, that men and the women tend to value with different traits that depend in on their own personal relationship readiness and intentions. The Christmas Crush Research <laughs> And sometimes and sometimes I tend to find that sometimes you just gotta step back from the research and just go, wow, people have actually researched this. This is both cool and also, I mean, like, was there nothing more important to research <laughs> available to them? But I've just got to hand it to these researchers because I, they are good. Anyway, some of this research, you know, includes Metamet and Metagali. I'm sorry, I butchered these names completely. And Imara and Manahando. 2022, because these two researchers study the um, types of traits that both men and women value in short-term relationships. Researchers also acknowledge that prior research has found that women are more selective in general, but both sexes are more selective in choosing long-term partners compared to short-term ones. As a result, the researchers studied 1,000 people and the results showed that men were more selective regarding a person's physical appearance and women were more selective in all other areas of partner preference. For example, valuing, dominance, kindness, intellect as well as understanding. Furthermore, the two researchers found that a person's relational intentions mattered as well, as well because they found that people who were looking for, short, for a short-term relationship had a higher preference for physical appearance, sociability and humour. And this I think makes a perfect sense around the holiday season because there seems to be lots of parties, social events, and job work dues, so it only makes a sense for a person to pick a, a short-term partner that's sociable. They yeah, can show off to their friends and their families, and give a, a good impression of them, or at least their tastes. Yet, uh, when it comes to uh, people who were looking for a longer term partner, partner, these are people that need other things more highly than uh, physical appearance, sociability and uh, humour, since these people will show the highest selectivity in most other areas of uh, partner preference. For example, kindness, reliability, understanding, domestic and cultivated and how similar they were to each other. Another surprising finding of the research is that the researchers found that there were no interaction effect between mating strategies and sex, meaning that the differences are between long-term and short-term partner seekers and what types of mate preferences they valued wasn't based on her sex. In other words, they found no difference between how men and women decide to, between the partners, as well as it shows that when it comes to short-term relationships, both men and the women value the same traits. How to spot a short-timer? And of course, nothing on this podcast is any sort of official relationship advice, but I still think that this is quite handy to know, to like some accent. As nice as I think it would be yet to be able to read the minds of our suitors, 
and that's a word you don't use often. <laughs> what are we akin to? Is to interpret that behaviour so that you can know where if you're being winter coated and that we can learn how to stop ourselves falling for it. Firstly, one of the signs to watch for is the changing of the seasons. Since if you were ever contacted by a previous love for interests, then naturally you would want to redo your time with them through a road colours lens. This isn't the best idea. Since it would be best at best to put on your reading glasses, to use a terrible analogy, and remind yourself about why you or them broke up in the first place. Due to people change, including you, and a past romance might not fit the person that you are now, and it might not be right for you at the current stage in your life. Secondly, timing definitely matters, because if an ex texts you during the summer, and apparently misses the two of you spending um, time together walking on a beach, is then, in all fairness, this person is more likely to miss you than, let's say, someone who texts you in the winter months because of what they want is a your company to some parties. Old flames save money, and I'm still quite surprised that this is a reason. <laughs> and this, I'm not exactly sure of where this fits in the whole warning sign or protecting yourself bit, but this does like be a come clear though. But old relationships save you money compared to sparking new ones. And I suppose that this is because with new relationships, you will tend to go out to dinner at neutral locations, you will buy each other gifts and more. Yet when an old flame wants to get back together, if you were to only a cut cost, then this should be a massive no-no, since so-called dates will whack on a sister of invitation to watch a movie on the sofa and, uh, and order a, a, a takeaway, and you might start to wonder if you're being used or not, and this is the really bad bit. As this a person could be sending a sign that you were well, that they aren't willing to spend money on you at all in a meaningful way. And this is even more true when your circle of date wants to spend time with you but to keep warm and lower their own heating bills. And I'm very, very shocked sure people do that. I mean, like, if you're that concerned about your energy bills, which I think we all are now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just contact, a, I wouldn't contact the past thing, not that I actually have any, but yeah, and no, you just shouldn't do that. I mean, like, what, on what planet is that right? Anyway, and finally, and this links to like what I said earlier, but yeah, but like earlier, showing you off as a, a new date, date, but definitely be mindful where that there is in a chance of a new or old partner might just want to take you to a party as a mere egg accessory to improve their appearance. Basically, this I would make you worth no more. Then a nicer designer watch or a handbag, it certainly doesn't make you seem special, even though you are. Conclusion So we started off this podcast episode by looking at the great question of how to tell if a seasonal romance is serious or not. And I definitely feel like we know what the answer now, because if you suspect that an ex's sudden interest um, in the you is seasonal related, then maybe you shouldn't waste your time 
on them because you were really are just like being winter coated and you will never know about that. That's why I free you up to meet an authentic love interest that sees you form who you truly are. A bright, intelligent, amazing person that is far more than a mere winter coat. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you got something out of it. I like you know that I did and I think that it's always really like nice that uh, we're from that time to time to look at uh, quite a light hearted topic and to be honest I think this is actually like quite a lot of fun and this is not serious in uh, the slightest which makes it perfect for this time of year. So if you know someone who will enjoy today's episode then definitely share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help us spread the word out about the podcast. And definitely check out the psychology of relationships, the social psychology of friendships, the romantic relationships and more. It's an absolute brilliant book that also makes a perfect Christmas gift this holiday season. <laughs> but if you didn't want to buy a book, you still wanted to give a podcast podcast be about one time support then you can now buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Connor Whiteley. So have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free eight book psychology box set, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.